You know it's a really, really stupid waste of money? Drug testing welfare recipients. And for, I'm sure, many of you out there, you can go, well, yeah. But for others, you might be confused, or maybe you're like, well, those, you know, welfare queens are probably all spending their welfare checks on drugs and alcohol and sex or something. And... What? <laughs> like, I've heard a whole lot of crazy things on the internet from people claiming to what the, you know, welfare recipients are spending this money on. Now, mind you, for the most part, this money comes in the form of either WIC checks or cards that can be used for pretty specific things. Mind you that there are safeguards already built into this institution to prevent such abuses. And granted, some abuses do still occur, but you're going to spend more money testing the people getting the stuff than you are going to ever save on preventing the fraud. I mean, that's, that's statistically proven. Because, of course, the fraud numbers are tiny. Like, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but check the link below. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the numbers are going to be very small. So, why are we first off wasting the money to test all of these people to catch, you know, a few thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars of fraud, whatever? We're gonna spend a lot more than that trying to catch them. First and foremost, that's dumb, economically speaking. Spending more money to stop a problem than the problem itself is causing makes no sense. Now, beyond that, it, it smacks of certain assumptions about welfare recipients, doesn't it? We need to drug test the welfare recipients. Well, why? Do we drug test uh, people receiving Medicare, Medicaid? Do we drug test people on retirement? Like, do we drug test people for banks? Like, why are we going to drug test people for government assistance? Oh, well, if they're wasting their money on drugs, then why should we be assisting them? How are they really going to be wasting their money on drugs if we're giving them assistance to go to food? And sure, you can make the argument, well, they'd find a way around it. They'd sell the card or some convoluted thing that I'm going to say. And, you know, fine, okay, there, that abuse of the system could possibly exist, but... Who's to say that, you know, at that point, they're not just going to buy drugs that you're not testing for? You really can't fully stop the abuse. There are reasonable safeguards you can put into any particular system, and then you will just have to accept the fact that there are a few out there who will abuse the system. Individually punish them, as you can, and accept the fact that the world operates under the laws of entropy and any system will have loss. Deal with it. It's not exactly like the rest of our government systems are shiny examples of efficiency and good money spending. If you're going to pick on welfare as your topic to save the budget, well, you know, that, that's sort of like saying, yeah, our dam is about to break, so what I decided to do was clean up the road next to it, so it looks really good. Okay, I mean, that was nice of you. Yes, the road looks great, but if the dam breaks, no one gives a shit about your road. It's underwater. You, you didn't really do anything. <laughs> the, the welfare program is not the reason our budget sucks. We all know this. Like, we want to blame the welfare queens for somehow vampiring money out of the system with their homeless fangs. I don't know. But they're not the problem. Anyone can tell you that if they pay attention to the budget system. If you look at where expenditures are going, not look at the defense budget. You might want to look at any and all of the expenditures of Homeland Security, DARPA, that sort of thing, and start questioning, you know, why are we spending money to destroy this much? And then we're going to worry about, you know, 1% of homeless people and welfare recipients taking advantage of the system to the tune of maybe a few hundred thousand dollars a year. That's what we're getting upset about. When people are stealing, wasting, and throwing away billions of dollars every year in the government, either openly stealing it, misusing it, throwing it away, or forgetting about it, and this is your particular cause that you're getting upset about? We also have the people that do this because, quite frankly, they just don't like the poor. We, we all know they're out there, those people that, for some particular reason, even though some of them are poor, you have these people that talk about the goddamn poor and how lazy they are and how none of them do anything right, and the only reason they're poor is because they suck, basically. And in some minor cases, this is true. There are people, and I'm sure more than a few of them out there, who are poor because of poor life choices. But um, really, for the most part, a lot of people are poor because circumstance. They're born poor, and they're born into a family that can't send them to college, so they have to get a more menial job to try to make ends meet. So they don't really have time or money to go to college, and they can't really get scholarships, so maybe they're okay grades because they have to work part-time in high school to get by. And then you have a person who 
without unusual circumstance, the grace of another human being or some such thing is basically trapped in a cycle of being poor. Being poor is expensive, strangely enough. Yet, these people look at the poor and the only thing they can see is some trailer park trash person. You know, a mother with like 16 million kids who's too drunk to move with the dad who's probably on crack or something. And they're getting their welfare checks and their government checks for their children to spend on their drugs. And they're all just squalling and taking up space and beds at hospitals when the kids get sick. And I'm sure that particular horrifying scenario I just laid out there exists somewhere. One person is out there probably like that. I'll grant it, maybe a few. But let's look at the other side of the coin here real quick before I close this up. Is that person there, as awful as they are, worth all of the other people who are trying to get by through difficult circumstances? Maybe they had twins when they expected to have one kid and one of them needed an expensive operation and suddenly you have a family that goes from middle class to near devastated broke. And are these poor, lazy people? No, they're working decent jobs that are well-paying. Most of the money's just going to pay off medical expenses, the house loan, all the other stuff they bought before they had to spend $500,000 to save their children's lives. Now, yes, my circumstance is almost as extreme as the other side's circumstance, but they both exist. And you really have to ask yourself, is it worth cutting off the person who desperately needs help because there is another person out there who doesn't really need help but is trying to get it anyway? Should we let the one person drown because the guy over there, he doesn't look like he's really drowning, but he's calling for my attention, so fuck them both? No. In the lifeguard analogy, you try to save the person who's actually drowning first. Once you're done with them, if the person's still fucking around in the, you know, kiddie pool pretending they're drowning, you address that then. Yeah, simple. Very, very, very simple. You want to deal with the problem of welfare recipients, if you want to call it a problem and phrase it that way. Get them off welfare and not in the bad way. Give them positions of permanence. Give them a house that they can afford to pay off. Give them a job that would let them afford to pay it off and let them at least work by the merits of their own will to make something of themselves. If the opportunity is actually given to them and then they screw it up, then they screwed it up. And if they're in a bad situation because, you know, well, they screwed the pooch, fine. That's on every person to make or break a circumstance as they, as they will. But if you don't even give them the chance to pull themselves up and then blame them for where they are, you're just mean-spirited. You're just fucked up at that point because, well, that's like saying, hey, a guy who's never walked in his life, why don't you get up and walk? Yeah, why are you sitting in that chair, you asshole? <laughs> like, no, he can't walk. And it's just like, not again with all, but with most of the people who are trapped in homelessness or destitution or simply being very poor, there isn't a simple escape. There isn't a five-step process or ten-step process and they're guaranteed to be not poor. There isn't a do these things and you will be richer. There isn't a, oh, just get a better job. No, no. Better jobs are harder to get. If you're coming from a lower income job up to a higher income job, they're not likely to hire you. Competition is fierce. Job markets are very fickle. And maybe you get lucky and you get in there, but pointing to the lucky guy's story and saying anyone can make it is bullshit. It's like saying, oh, a guy won the lottery, so you should play. Like, anyone can win the lottery. Yes, technically, anyone can possibly win the lottery. But you, specifically winning the lottery, you're not really ever going to. No. The odds are so strongly against any one particular person, you in this context winning it, that good luck. So to close this all up for you in a nice, simple little package, right? We have a solution here in search of a problem, or to put it more aptly, some discrimination and ignorant bigotry in search of a cover story to be executed. For the most part, or in at least many cases, we have people who literally just discriminate against the poor, or against poor minorities, or against anything to do with being poor or homeless. And it's something we should question in ourselves why we do this. If you're not poor, rather than looking at a poor person and saying he should get a job, Think, just for a moment, why might he be in that position? Why is that guy homeless? It might not, you know, he, does he look lazy? No, actually, he looks like he has a lot of mental issues and probably can't hold down a job because he can't get psychiatric help. Right, people have reasons for existing in the gutters, and they're not by choice almost ever. We don't need to handicap further the people who are already the worst off. We actually need to raise them up. Think about that. If nothing else, when you see a person in a poor, destitute, horrible circumstance trying to get some help so that they can be at least a little less hungry, 
think about that first. Would they be in that position by choice? Honestly, really, would you choose to be in that position just to get a couple free meals? Would anyone? No. Just think about that.